bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success. And as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hi there, and welcome to Sim Soul Sessions, the safe space to share your stories. Tonight, we are speaking with the Jamaican queen who hated the same hair on her head that would come to be known as her crowning glory. But did you know that the gorgeous, accomplished former Miss Universe Jamaica, Davina Bennett, didn't even want to do pageantry because she never thought she was even beautiful, much less smart? Well, tonight she shares the struggles she's been through and that she's still working through, but telling us how she's managed to come to a place where she is the happiest she has ever been in her life. Davina is my guest tonight, and I welcome you to the show, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. How gorgeous are you? <laughs> I almost thank don't want you. to sit here side of you, but it's good to have you. Thank you for having me. You're home for a spell. Yes. And very busy. Very busy. Shooting and meeting and greeting and all the rest of oh, it. Oh yes, everything is happening. I'm trying to soak it up before I have to go again. Yeah, all right. We're gonna talk about everything you're doing now, but let's, let's talk a little bit about your journey, which is really very inspiring. Thank I'm gonna go back to Clarendon. Can I go oh, back to Clarendon? Let's go. Where it all started. <laughs> um, with a Davina who did not like her hair, didn't really like her life, felt like something was missing felt like there was something bigger waiting for her. Talk to me about that. Uh, Davina, then I grew up, it was a very simple life at the time. And I always felt like I wanted more or there was more for me. And so I guess, you know, when you watch TV and you see things that look bigger, you want to rush to get there. And I felt like that was my issue then. I wanted to rush to be somewhere else and to be doing more. And I felt like I was in a box where no one could really hear me or mm -hmm. see me. And so I struggled when I was younger because of that feeling or that vision or that thought that I needed to be doing more. But you always felt like, you also felt like something in you was not enough. Even though you said you always had the fire in your belly, to be whatever you thought you wanted to be, but something about young Davina thought she wasn't, she wasn't good enough. I, I struggled with insecurities, trust issues, uh, self-esteem, and that played on me for years. Growing up, it was very difficult for me because I was very negative. I felt like even though I'm trying to do things that I know I'm supposed to do or I'm moving in a direction that I'm supposed to. I'm still doubting myself along the way, always thinking that there's always this voice in the back of my head pretty much just saying, yeah, you're going to do that, but you're not going to really pass. Or, you know, you're not going to win or it doesn't make no sense. So I felt like I, I was my own enemy mm -hmm. for quite a few years. And you locked yourself away a lot. You didn't really talk a lot to people. You, you were your own worst enemy, but you were, you were also your own best friend. I would, oh wow, I never, <laughs> I never look on it like that because I always felt like I wasn't really a good friend to myself because I, I am my harshest critic. And I felt like for years, I would tend to pick at myself and I've, I've done that for years. I've only just started learning how to be a little bit more softer, but mm -hmm. for years I've always been that way. And that's because I've, I don't know, I feel like that's how I keep myself in check. I know I, I remained humble, but that's not really what humble is. I just felt like I needed to 
just know my worth and my value a little more. Right. And we're going to talk to how you've gotten to that place where you now give yourself the kind of grace you've always deserved. Yes. But you say you felt that life was very simple back then. And it is only now, when you look back, you realize that the simplicity you hated was actually a blessing. A blessing. Like today, I'm telling you, now that I'm back in Jamaica, that's what I want. I <laughs> want the simple things because, you know, when you, 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 move, to the, you move to the States or you, you, you see the big things and you're in the big cities and you're doing so much, you come to appreciate the small little things when life slows down and the coconut trees in the back. And <laughs> you, I, I don't have no coconut trees in, <laughs> in Miami or in New York, you know? So it's just like you come to appreciate the things that I, I took for granted. You know, just when I came, I was like, I have to go to Salt River, have to jump off the road. Uh, you know, I have to get my fried fish, all those little things that I thought was, oh, this is not what I want and I want more than this and this is too small. I now appreciate them. Can you ever get that back? Can today's Davina ever get the simple simplicity of life back? Because your life is completely different now. Uh, no, I can't get that back, unfortunately. But I can learn to embrace the now and appreciate what I, I did lose. So I'm making up for lost time. Yeah, love that. Um, you've also made up for a lot of lost time with your parents. Yes. Parents got divorced when you were 13. And I asked you how that affected you. And you were stunned for a long time when I asked you because you said you hadn't really thought about it. But your response was so powerful. So that was an experience in helping you to understand love in a different way, mediating love, being in the middle of love from two separate places, and you say understanding the love language of your parents. Yes. That, that question really stunned me because I've done so many interviews, but I don't think I've ever been asked that question. And so it made me really look into myself as the child that was really dealing with this and how I navigated myself in that situation. And it was a difficult one for me because uh, I had, my parents were, one at the time felt like good and one felt like bad. Mm -hmm. Mind you, they weren't. <laughs> but at the time, just because the one that's spoiling me, which is my dad, yes. is the one that I felt like, okay, uh, yeah, daddy loves me more. And so I struggled with, figuring out what the love language was for, of my mom. Yeah. And that, that was difficult because then that put a strain on our relationship. It put a strain on how I was. And so it, it got to a point where, because I, don't, I didn't have both parents in the same space, I wondered if I was loved. And so that, a lot, I don't feel like a lot of people realize that when that happens in a household, it, it, it really affects the child. And just how you navigate it, sometimes it plays a, a vital role in how you see things and how you operate. And yeah. so that was, that was tough. You weren't able to work that through until later on in your life. Way um, later. And communication with your mom played a key role because none of you were talking. No, about it at the we time. didn't talk for years. Right. We literally just started talking. And talk for, for years, we just... We're, we're silent. Yeah. And how, how do you navigate a silent relationship and make a change? You know what I mean? So that's a key point on which we're going to build when we come back. More with Davina on the other side. Soon come. everybody we are back with Davina who before the break was talking to us about her relationship with her mom and how she was able to navigate that to the point now where you and your mother are really good friends you and yes. dad are also good but um, you say no you have conversations with your mom where words like I love you are commonplace um, where she says I'm proud of you which are the things that you didn't hear because you guys weren't telling each other at the time what was quote unquote wrong so right. she was, you say, just doing the best she could based on the relationship she had had right. with her. Yeah, she, I don't think she knew better. And I feel like our culture in Jamaica is very rough 
And sometimes I feel like we don't, her parents rather don't give the affirmations as the child would need. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very sensitive, emotional child. And so I feel like my mom also didn't know my love language. And the things that I needed to make me feel good, I wasn't getting that. Yeah. And while I was getting that from my dad, I needed it from my mom as well. Yeah. So it always felt like I had an imbalance there. Yeah, I'm glad you've corrected that. But yes. it's a key takeaway um, that Davina mentioned, especially for children who go through divorce and how parents treat with that. Um, when we spoke, I, I, I was talking to you along the way. You just mentioned it, that you've you know, had certain issues along the way, and one of them is trust. And yes. I asked you about the source of your trust issues. <laughs> so you're looking at you, your bracelet over there, <laughs> as you're about to take a deep breath. Um, and you gave me a story, Dav. And I dug a little deeper because I sensed there was something more there. Um, and you have trust issues because you have valid reasons to have trust issues. And it's something that you haven't really spoken about before. No. Well, we're doing this soon. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, I have trust issues because uh, growing up, uh, in that small, simple life, there were also a lot of things that were happening that should not have been happening. And uh, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of us kids grew up in spaces like that. Uh, no fault of the, the parents, but just people in our environments and people around us. But unfortunately, I was also a product of that, or a victim of that rather, where I was molested. And that happened for quite a while. And I felt like that played a very vital role in me developing trust issues with family, mm -hmm. friends, just people in my circle. And because I also didn't have that safe space to talk, I kept that in for, for years. For 19 years. Yes, yeah. for a very long time. Yeah. How do you carry that by yourself for 19 years? That makes you tired. That not make you tired? It makes you tired. It makes you depressed. Uh, makes you feel weak. Makes you feel like you're not worthy of anything. Uh, and it played a lot on my insecurities. It made me, played a lot on my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And the issues that I had growing up were pretty much very connected to the things that I've I've dealt with as a child. So why at 19, was that the time for you to share it and lighten your load a little bit? Uh, I would say that the people in my life or friends or relationships created safe spaces for me to be open. And I felt like it was just a burden I couldn't carry anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, just, I, just had to, I just had to say it, and I felt like over the years, just talking more has been therapy for me. And I realized that's how I was able to kind of just navigate myself. But the, the strain of it didn't leave me until in my, like, maybe last year. Because I still carried that baggage with yeah. me yeah. for years. Even though I was talking about it, I wasn't doing anything about it to make me feel better. I still blamed myself for a lot. And I still carried that with me, thinking that I am just not worthy of a lot of things. That, 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 that unworthiness. I tell you, this program is, it's, it's, uh, that unworthiness took you into pageantry. It came with you into modeling. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, you said you felt better as a model because modeling, you didn't have to be. You beautiful. didn't have to be beautiful. Yeah. So uh, you feel beautiful and you didn't feel smart. So modeling was the perfect place. Yeah, it was, it was perfect because I felt like I just needed to sell pretty clothes and I needed to just, oh, oh, Simone. <laughs> not oh. Me. It's not me, Dab. It's oh, gosh. Me. Uh, so I felt like I just needed to... I just needed to sell pretty clothes and I needed to just 
be unique. I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't need to be the most beautiful. I didn't need to be the smartest in the room because oftentimes you don't even speak. And so I felt like that was the avenue for me. So I never saw myself being a beauty queen because I never saw myself doing even this. Your dad wanted you to do pageantry. You had friends encouraging you to do yes. pageantry. <laughs> you told them absolutely no way. And so when your, one of your, the folks who were involved in your career came to you and said, Dad, the signing with the modeling thing, it's not working out. You're too well proportioned. You're too pretty of face. Pageantry is where you belong. Even then you said no. Yeah, I thought they were crazy. I was like, what are you telling me I'm too pretty? That makes no sense. But at the time, you know, each season, what they're looking for in these agencies changes. And so it would be, sometimes they're looking for a girl with an afro, sometimes the blonde hair, blue eye. And so at that time they were looking for models that were not as proportioned. And so I was too pretty at the time for the mold that they were looking for. And so when I was encouraged to go into pageantry, I thought that this was just a joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never saw myself as being as beautiful as people would describe. And I never thought that I would be able to speak in front of people. So I, I never gave myself that credit to even consider doing that. Um, wow. <laughs> We're going to talk about 2016 upwards when we come back from the break. But do you see yourself as beautiful now? Oh, yes. I'm oh, you stunning. do? Oh. Yes. Did you just say I'm stunning? I'm stunning. <laughs> God. All right, we'll come back. 2016, 17, pivotal years that have taken Davs to where she is now. We'll talk about that, some of the roughest moments in her life when we come back. Hi, everybody. We are back with this beautiful young lady, inside and out. Um, I'm going to jump to 2016. 2017, you entered the pageant. Um, and who we saw on stage was a confident, um, you know, self-assured young woman. And Dav Davina will tell you she was anything but. But especially in the lead up to that, because in 2016, you had surgery. Um, you had a, what was it? Ruptured, ruptured ovarian cysts. Ruptured ovarian cysts. Right. And so you did surgery. Mm -hmm. Your mom helped you back to healing. Yes, she had to take care of me for like three months. I was staying in Kingston at the time and after surgery I had to go back to Clarendon and I couldn't, I couldn't even bathe myself so mommy took care of me for, for three months until I was able to get back to myself and right after that I remember again because I had a scar that also added to the fire where I felt like oh gosh so on top of not feeling beautiful now I have a scar to deal with. And after that scar healed and I went back to Kingston, I decided, you know, I'm going to do a photo shoot for my birthday. Mm -hmm. And this photo shoot uh, took place the day before my birthday. And this is a celebration of you overcoming your yes. surgery. Yeah. And you're looking forward to marking a new year. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm trying to push myself to feel myself again, you know? So it was a very... Very sexy photo shoot, actually. It was lingerie, and I was, you know, I was like, I'm pushing myself to, you know, sometimes you have to, have, you have to be a little bit del delusional. To fake it till yeah, you make it. Yeah, to fake it till you make it. Oh. I was gonna fake it until I make it, and that didn't turn out so well because, on that very same photo shoot, I was robbed, and it was me, my best friend, the photographer, and uh, a family friend. And we were robbed at gunpoint. I remember that we're, we were shooting and I was in the car and we were getting ready to leave actually. And the men just came out of nowhere with guns and they threw me out the car, threw me on the ground and they had guns at our heads. And it was pretty much a question that they asked was, do you want to live or do you want to die? And I felt like in that moment, I was like, all right, God, this is it. I'm going now. And I remember looking at my best friend and it was almost like we really thought that this was going to be it. And I think coming out of that was when something touched him because he thought 
if we live, if we come out of this, then we have a purpose and you have a purpose. And he saw that light within me and he saw that I had a greater purpose. And Jeremy and I are my best friend. He was the one that signed me up for the pageant just a couple weeks after that because he realized that I was submerging into depression and it was a very dark time for me. And uh, I went to the phase of thinking they should have killed me and I, I shouldn't have lived. And because of all the baggage that I had, I didn't think I deserved to be here. And so he saw that I was going down a very dark path and he brought the light. And he so signed he, you up for, for the pageant without your knowledge. Oh, yes. And you said, Jermaine, absolutely no Absolutely way. not. And he said... You're going to have to do it. Let's wager. Yeah, he said... Actually, he said, you know, if you just make it through the first round, then, all right, you're going to do it. But if not, then I won't trouble you again. I'm going to say, I may not even make it through the first <laughs> round. So, all right, let's, let's go. And, I mean, here we are. <laughs> At that point, no, you're coming off another traumatic event. Right. How do you get over having a gun to the back of you? I don't even know how you live through that and not relive it and it's it and and, you know, and I also didn't get therapy so that was just something that I had to just navigate I I couldn't eat for like over a week I was I just kept throwing up it was it was very it was very traumatic for me to be honest and for him as well like we because you know somebody asking you if you want to live or you want to die that's not something that goes away like that you know, and it was like, if you breathe too hard, you're dead. And I mean, they didn't just have, they had the guns at our heads. So it was... What did you say in that moment when they asked you? No, I thought I was dead. I gave up. I, I gave up. I was like, all right, this is it. Well, maybe this is just how it's supposed to be. And you know what, let's just go. So I really thought that I lost my life at that mm. point. And so when he decided that, you know, we're in a very dark place and we need to lighten the air, and he signed me up for this pageant and I, he came home and he said, you're going to have to do this. I said, absolutely not. This is not, this is crazy. <laughs> and uh, went and we passed the first round and then he trained me. And in the walking and the walking yes. and, and, and my, my speech and every little thing. He was the person that was there. And I mean, during this time, I mean, my dad was very happy I was doing this. My mom was worried that I probably wouldn't be able to talk in front of people. You were deathly afraid of public speaking. I, oh gosh, it was, it was a big, big fear for me. Like I, I thought I was gonna freeze up on stage. So I, I tried to stay away from things that involved speaking. Mm -hmm. And so, and obviously I had my low self-esteem, so I didn't really think that I was beautiful enough to be Miss Jamaica. Mm. That was, that seemed like a really big thing. And all the girls that I've seen, I view them as beautiful, but I couldn't see myself as such. And so that, it took a lot. And it, it, it took a lot from him too, cause he had to be motivating me and pushing me and telling me you can do this. And half the time I remember walking in those Chinese lingeries and falling in the house mm -hmm. and just being so upset. I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't want to do this, you know? Just let me be. Mm. And he's like, no, Davina, because I see you as someone great mm. and we're not giving up. Mm -hmm. Good thing too, because- Good thing. You won the pageant. I did. And look at you. I mean, with, even with the talk, with your hair, is it really going to sit on your, is the crown going to sit on your head? Is the, oh, yes. this is, is that people telling you process it? Oh yes. Because you're never going to get anywhere with that Afro. Oh yes, I mean, People that were close to me, people that were fans, people that just followed me. Everyone had an opinion about my hair and it was that, you know, already struggling with this hair and then to hear people telling you, you're not, you're not even giving yourself a fair chance. You're going to pretty much, you're either not going to make it past the top 16 or you won't even make it at all. You need to process your hair, you need to wear a wig, you need to do something because that's not been done and I don't think it's happening anytime soon. And so. That played a lot on me as well, differently from all the other insecurities that I had. All right. All right. So she won the crown here. Then she went to Vegas. It's another story. I was going to say for another time, but yes, it's another time, but that time is right after this break. So I'll be <laughs> right back with Davina when we come back. Soon come. <laughs> Thank you. 
thanks for staying with us, everybody. Still here with Davina. Um, picking up where she won the crown here for Miss uh, Universe Jamaica. She goes to Vegas to represent us there. But, um, I'm going to touch briefly on this because we're not even going to get into the weeds with this. But you mentioned to me that your, your year of rain was very difficult. Yes. And that at times you were not only broke, but you were hungry. What? Yes. Yes, that, that happened. Uh, during my time uh, in the pageant, I was very independent, or I wanted to be very independent, and so I didn't call on my family for help. And I struggled while I was reigning because there was just not enough money allocated to me. And so I had to just make do with what I have. And it got to a point where I didn't have enough. And I remember one day at training, I had no money left. And I remember just sitting on the floor, begging God at the time. I said, God, please, nobody make me vomit the oats here. Because I remember I had like $200 or so to buy like tin milk from across the road to make that oats. And I brought that oats to training with me. And when I had that, I was like, Lord, please just make it stay down because I don't have anything else. And the person that was training me at the time, I remember giving me a big bottle of cashew. I had those cashew for days leading up. And that was crazy because my parents always made sure that I was good. And so I didn't, I didn't know what it felt like to not have food mm -hmm. to go to my bed, you know, and not, not knowing how to figure it out. And I know that this is probably going to also hurt them because they didn't know that I was going through this because I, I wanted to go through this on my own and I wanted to figure my way out. And so it took on a lot of, just a lot that I, I said pride is one of hell of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I felt like also my pride got the best of me and I didn't want to call upon anyone. Mm -hmm. And so I struggled my way out. Yeah. And a leading of, up yes. to the pageant, I also didn't want to go. It got to a point where there was just a lot of, a lot happening behind the scenes. And I, I felt like I was being pushed down and I felt like I was being treated badly. And so I didn't want to go. And thankfully, it was because of people in my circle that encouraged me to say, Dav, just go and see what will happen. Because I was demotivated again, and I didn't feel like going to Vegas was going to make any difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, all the struggles that I'm going with, and plus all of my issues, it was yeah. just like, this is too much for yeah. me. And but you went? I went. And you created history? as the first black woman to place in the top three, with this big head of hair, yes. and you, you built a legion of fans, yes. also a legion of naysayers. Yes. You had to come off social media oh, because yes. of some of the feedback that you were getting. Um, about your body? My body, about your, my hair. Your hair, <laughs> about your hue, yes. um, your color. But then, you know, we are looking on, we're not seeing any of this. Um, you're thinking this is going to be a platform for very big things to happen in your life, but you went through a lot of disappointment, Dav. You've been hearing a lot of no's since that pageant that we didn't know about. We said a yes is no. Yes. But you went through a very low period to the point where you told your agent, free me, I'm done. Oh, yes. I went through a series of no's. This was from before the pageant, after the pageant. It to get to where I am, into this same modeling space, it has taken me about eight and a half years to get to where I am now. Almost nine years, actually, because I started from when I was very young. And having to go to these, I've been to places, I've been to London, I've been to New York, I've been to Paris, and I've, you know, I've been told no so many times that at this point, I feel like I'm immune. <laughs> to hearing no, like when I hear no now, it's just like, okay, all right. Next. Next, I get so used to, but then it was tough to constantly keep hearing no when I know I have a vision 
and a dream in my mind and nobody is seeing it and nobody's believing it because people around me are also telling me to give up. Like, try something else, this naga work. You know, that, that's difficult because when you have people around you that you think that they would see the dream too and they don't, mm -hmm. it's quite difficult to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I owe all credit to God and my little support system that I do have that tell me to keep going because if it wasn't for that, I would have given up a long time ago. And after the pageant, and I thought that after creating history, I was going to knock the doors that I thought were gonna open. And those doors still did not open. And it took me at least four, five years after that to still get into the modeling world. Let's talk about January of this year. <laughs> um, let's talk about this amazing billboard that was to be, that you shared with everybody this billboard was to be. And then you get a call that this billboard was not to be. Right. And you said, why am I doing, Davina, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> why are you doing this? Just walk away, it's never gonna work. Oh, and yeah. then you got a call one day in your kitchen. Yes. <laughs> that was... So that took you to your knees. Yeah, for like two hours. I, uh, I shot this just as... I just signed, and this was one year into my career, which is, for me, one year into my career is foundation stage. You don't really do anything big, really. You do things that are worth mentioning, but nothing like a billboard. And so when I got called to do that job, I was told that there's a possibility of a billboard. And I remember going on set and just greeting everybody as I usually do. And before I even did the photo shoot, they sent me the contract that I was gonna do this billboard. And you know, so it's so funny that sometimes we think that we need to rush into things and not understanding that it's not the right time. And I thought to myself that years ago when I wanted to be this big model, I didn't have the personality and the, the drive and the persuasion that I have today after going through all of that over the years. Yeah. And so now I can walk into a room and I can command a space and I can I can land a billboard without even shooting first. That is something that I was, I would not have been able to do years ago. And sometimes we rush to do things not realizing that it's not our timing, it's God's timing. And I had to go through these years to get to this place where I walked into that room, they loved my personality, and the, the minute I started shooting, the woman said, the director at the time said, Davina, you were born to do this. And I remember preparing myself for that billboard, which got canceled. And then that plunged me into depression again, because okay. I thought, yeah, I'm giving up on this, because I thought that that was gonna be like something that, a dream that I've wanted for so long would have come through. And it wasn't until January of this year, someone was walking through New York City and took a picture, sent it to me, and said, do you know you're on a billboard in New York? And honestly, Simone, I was on the ground crying for two hours because I just couldn't believe that little girl from Clarendon made her dream come true. The beautiful girl from Clarendon yes. had her dream come true. Yes. She wouldn't have been able to be here. You've heard her reference family and heard her reference friends, her circle. It's time for good vibes. Run it, Laura. Hey friend, so we're just popping in to say hi as well as to continue to encourage you on that trajectory that you're on. This is just a tip of the iceberg. I know you were destined for great things from the get-go. You don't even have a question that girl. So I'm just here today to continue to encourage you because we've had those phone conversations where we're talking about the negatives and from now on it's all positives. Continue to do great. We love you. I love you. Dear Davina, I'm so proud of you. I never get tired of telling you that. I never get tired of celebrating your wins. I never get tired of praying for you. I never get tired of saying, oh my God, Davina, this is one of the wins. This is what we've been praying for. This is one of the wishes. I'm so proud to watch you grow from a little girl until you have become this amazing woman. You are a success story walking. You're a tower of strength 
walking. You're the living proof, the epitome of someone who has overcome many challenges. And one thing about you that I appreciate is your humility and your authenticity. You're always a Jamaican. We appreciate you. We celebrate with you. We are proud of you. And you will forever be our queen of hearts. I just want to tell you how amazing you are. You are a one in a million kind of friend. A friend that I never want to lose. You have been dear to my heart. And it just feels like you nourish my soul. I want to let you know that I love you from the deepest parts of my heart and I will forever be here to share in your achievements, your biggest moments from the days where we look at each other and burst in laughter to the days when we just cry on each other's shoulders. Just know that I'm the person that's always going to be here to support you. Thank you for being the motivator you are to me. Thank you for being the amazing human you are to all your friends and even your supporters that you don't even know. You have a heart that is so big and I pray nothing but blessings and riches and love and prosperity on your life because you deserve it. You deserve everything that's good and you deserve everything that's coming to you. Dab, I love you and I'll always be here for you. Thank you for being the amazing person that you are to me. I am so happy to be celebrating you and embracing you in the way that I think and believe that you should be celebrated. And I'm giving you all your flowers because you're somebody who doesn't stop to take stock of, of their blessings. You're always going, you're always working. I don't know anyone with a greater work ethic than you. So stop, pause, and feel this love that you deserve and all the flaws and all the accolades, all the respect. You're an icon, period. You're an icon, I love you, I adore you, and I'm so excited for your future. You've done so much, you've got so much more to do, and girl, this is just the beginning. Cheers. Hey Dav, I just wanna say that I'm extremely, extremely proud of you. From my Davina to my Davina. We have traversed through triumphs and challenges, and like a phoenix, you have risen above the ashes. Continue on your journey, walking to inspire. You are an inspiration to every single young girl, young guys that is out there in this world. Continue shining and let nobody dim your light. Continue taking up space. Love you from Germania. Hi there. Oh my gosh, I just want to say congratulations on everything that you have accomplished. You are amazing, you are beautiful, you are just extraordinary. I just want to say that you deserve everything that you have going for you and I know you're going to come with some more. I love you so much sis. I know that in any room that you go into you just light up, you just light up. and. I just love how you let your light shine wherever you go and you're not only an inspiration to other girls but you're also an inspiration to me personally so I just want to say I love you love you love you lots and congrats love. I just want to take the time to say how proud I am of you um, and all your accomplishments I've seen you work tirelessly over the years to where you are today and it is a testimony of your hard work, the tears, the sacrifices that you've made, and I am extremely proud of you. I wish you all the best. Continue to set the bar high, and I know that God has more in store for you, and it's going to be big. I love you, sis. And Adelina was so proud of you. As mommy said, I'm not a tired to see your face. <laughs> Just know it's a yo, the bag of tired to see your face. I know there's a lot, 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 lot more to come. So I just want to say I'm super proud of you. You know, the love is real over here all the time. You know that. Love you so much. I just want to just continue doing what you're doing, being an inspiration to others, continue being true to yourself. You know, and just being the queen that we all love. So, I love you, sis. Mwah. Love you, Davina. 
I know you were destined for greatness. That's why your first pet name was Miss World. This comes as no surprise for the milestone you have achieved. Let me use this opportunity to express my sincere love and blessing. Wishing for you, my princess, even though I gave birth to three princesses, but you are the one for the moment. I am confident that you are going to achieve much more. Remember, I told you when it is your time, you will have more than what your body can take. I love you dearly and happy that God has placed you in my life. You are blessed and highly favored. Love you, Olive. Take care. Love you, Olive. My daughter, Davina Bennett, from birth until now, she's a star. And I was so proud of her. She is a winner. I know one day, Davina, we are going to see her into a movie. I can't tell what kind of movie action or thriller or suspense but i know we are gonna see her and my baby girl keep shining i just want you to know that i am proud of you love you oh god no more oh god oh. <laughs> no simone you're wicked not crying, you're okay. I never planned for this. Oh, the parents get me every time. Can I tell you? The moms, especially. Oh my god. It's your village girl. <laughs> Super emotional. <laughs> you knew all those things, though. Is it just hearing them say it that? I mean, hearing them say it. Mm -hmm. My mom. Mm -hmm. Oh god. <laughs> I'm telling you, there is something to be said about giving people their flowers when they are here. Because they know you love them, you know. But you see, when you hear them tell you, it's a different thing. I'm going to allow this young lady to collect herself and see if she will actually talk. <laughs> oh God. Thank God for Kleenex. Because that box is almost... <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh, God. <laughs> Wrapping up our show with Devine, I know um, everybody, last year is a pivotal point in your life. It's taken you to a really good place. You were decisive in your actions and you decided to choose therapy. Something that for a long time you had said, I do that. What difference that I go make? Me not, why did you decide that last year was the year that you would start to work on yourself in that deliberate way? As I mentioned earlier in the interview that because of safe spaces and friends and relationships, I was able to talk. And so my friendship with Chevelle allowed me to look on therapy in a different way because she believes in therapy. And I felt like at the time, I didn't feel like talking to anyone would make a difference. And I guess different perspectives sometimes change the way on how you look at things and view things. And so she showed me the value and the importance of that. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, I'll go into it, but I doubt this is going to work. But all right, let me try it for you <laughs> and see how this go. Because that's me and the people that I have close to me. If they want good for me, I sometimes allow myself to. It's just the same way Jermaine signed me up and I did it. It's the same way my friend said, you know, do the therapy and see, because they know of me struggling. Mm -hmm. And so I started the therapy and I realized that it actually works because the baggage that I carry or I once carried, I carry no more. I talk about them and I'm able to do so, but I don't carry them with me. And so I realized that this really does work because it allows you to change your perspective. It allows you to live with the things that have happened because we can't change them. That's right. So we have to learn how to live with them. And so I feel like therapy is definitely something that I would encourage anyone to go into today because it works. You say it has allowed you to stop allowing your past to cripple you. Right. I'm no longer crippled by my past, my baggage, and the fear of me just thinking that I'm not good enough for certain things. 
I now know I'm worthy of everything that is coming my way. I know that I work hard for it. Nothing is handed to me. And so I feel like with those sessions, it has allowed me to change my perspective on how I view life and how I view myself. Mm -hmm. And the only way forward is just upward. And I'm on an upward trajectory right now in my life. And it's a blessing to say that. Yeah. Um, the final thing I want to ask you about is your relationship with God. You say, God, are you? What do you say? God, I'm a pirate. God, I'm a dupe. God, God, I'm a best friend. God, <laughs> yeah, man, me, me uh, and God, yeah, man, we, we, we yeah. mesh well, we work well. You say you have a time, every time you get to a point in your life where you're like, he sends a reminder. Every time, it's so crazy. Me, I say, God, why you always have to wait till the last time, last moment, the last draw, like, why is it always when I'm, my back is against the wall, you always remind me. But I feel like that's the relationship we have. Funny enough, because he wants me to have faith and to know that he got me and we're good. And so in every instance in my life, I will get to a point where I'm just like, God, we can't do this, you know. And half the time, I'm not going to lie, I really want to give up because it's very hard to keep going at things. Even now in my successful career that is going, I'm still being faced with so many no's. And it's just like, for me to keep going, I owe it all to God, because if not, then I wouldn't have the drive and the determination to keep going. Yeah. And so even with the billboard, it, it was moments before this, I came off social media, I was done again for the hundredth time. When that came out, I was like, who could it be but God? Mm -hmm. You know, and that keeps happening in my life. And I feel like I'm learning my work in progress and I'm learning to trust in him and have faith that no matter what, he got me and my dreams are going to become a reality and I'm never giving up on myself. Giving me goosebumps. <laughs> From that girl who did not believe in herself to look at you now. We are so proud of you. Thank you so much. And know that as great as things are now, greater things are in store. Thank you and so that much. you have the tools now to push yourself through even when you feel like you cannot and you don't want to. And we love that for you. Thank you. Every single blessing to you, Davina. And thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for having me. Today. Oh, yeah. gosh. Okay. <laughs> now it's time for our affirmation. Let's close the show in the right way. So let's dim our lights and do our thing. Listen, many see your glory. They never know your story. The difficulties you face day in, day out. The stress you face and what that's all about. The days you smile to the world and cry yourself to sleep. The days they tell you how lovely you look and you can't even eat. The accolades and the trappings of the position you hold while pain and emptiness eat away at your soul. More important though than what they say is what we tell ourselves. The lies that make us even more overwhelmed and bury us deeper into a state of despair and make us feel we're really going nowhere. Well, now may be a good time to share, to find that person who you know will care and lighten the load that you continue to shoulder. Have someone help you remove those very large boulders. One of the best ways to stay in the game is to remember there is absolutely no shame in getting the help you need in the midst of your strife to give you the tools to change course and to live your best life. So tonight we are affirming with my head held high and even while crying, I promise I will never stop trying. And that is our soul food for this evening and our show as well. Thank you so much for watching. We're here next week with another power or another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, everybody, every blessing. And please remember to count your blessings. Good night. <laughs>